Well, back into the lion's den. Before we do, please subscribe to join my kingdom so you don't miss a new video. Following immediately after the ending of the last episode, Freddy has been arrested and he's brought out and his robe slips so everyone can mock how small his penis is. Yeah, we're off to a great start. Back at home, Velma catches the news broadcast announcing his arrest and the news anchor gets her name wrong, saying Vermin Dorkly and adds that her father, Amon Dinkley, will be representing Freddy. Sweet Jesus, this early already? The writers thought they could pull a fast one with only Velma getting her name pronounced incorrectly. Say my name, say my name. Vermin Dorkly. It's Velma Dorkly. I mean, Dinkley. Vermin's own father, Amon Dinkley. That's not a curveball like I was talking about. Anyway, Velma is pissed off that her father is representing Freddy to keep his pregnant girlfriend happy and thinks it is a waste of time because, well, he's white with a tiny dong. Didn't do it. Fred's a rich white guy with a tiny dong. He did it. Get it? We aren't three minutes into the second episode, and the mask just flies off. Tell us how you really feel, Mindy. So, Velma leaves for school and arrives with Norville, who expresses his disgust for 420 culture. What the, who the hell wrote this? Hold on a second. Ekshara Sekar? Oh. Oh no, she's a Mindy groupie. Ekshara was her assistant and wrote a show based on Mindy's life? We've, we've gone too far. This... this is it. God, you know what to do. I know, my son. Now, while we await the sweet release of death, Velma is asked if she knows what 420 is, and she scoffs at the question because it obviously means adults who still watch cartoons. <laughs> you know, because the show thinks it can get away with being racist and the rape of our minds. So, Velma goes off to find Daphne to help her obtain her mother's case file. Daphne is then dropped off by her parents, and when they smell the 420 culture not 10 feet from them, they decide to go and get sheet cake, because whatever it is the kids are smoking is so potent it gave the cops munchies through almost a contact high. Wait a minute, I bet the students are inserts for the writing staff. So Velma meets up with Daphne asking for her help, and Daphne agrees for $500. Over at the Jones Mansion, Velma's dad tries to explain that the case won't be easy. What are you fucking talking about? Yeah, yeah, cartoon logic, but even Scooby-Doo was more believable than this. No weapon, motive, witnesses, or any evidence of any kind? This is Jussie Smollett's wet dream, and you think this case is hard? Ah, yes, evil white guy, that's right. Anyway, Amon's brilliant idea is to play up the public's perception of Freddy by making him off to be this cute little kid he still basically is. The show goes so far to even show that he talks like a kid still, and he couldn't possibly survive on the outside on his own, as he chokes on pancakes like George W. Bush did pretzels. Over at Norville's, Velma is looking for a way to make $500 and finds Daphne's moms are being requested by Norville's mom, the principal of the school, to go undercover as students to find the Candyman, or drug dealer. In Norville's room, Velma interrupts his streaming about food asking for $500. She makes an offhand comment about Southeast Asian cuisine that loses him followers, and he gets an idea to get Velma the cash that she needs after she leaves. Back at school, Velma meets up with Daphne, who offers her a way to work off the cash by working for her. It turns out, Daphne is the candy man of the school, and once again, the show brings up more TV tropes because the showrunners think they're smarter than a fifth grader. And yet again, Velma brings up how white people have it better before passing on Daphne's offer and threatens to tell Daphne's moms, which Daphne threatens Velma in return. And of course, Velma buckles. Meanwhile, Norville is trying to figure out how to get $500 for Velma and comes across a stranger who offers him a way to make quick money. Cutting back to Daphne and Velma, they meet up and Daphne is in disguise, explaining what she wants Velma to do, who then tries to go and sell some drugs to stoners and fails. Daphne reminds Velma the case file is on the line and we are forced to go through a montage of Velma failing to sell drugs and it is as painful as you can imagine. Then we cut right back to Norville, who is willing to have people cut out his kidney for money and he just accepts this, because get it? Simps don't care about themselves as long as they think they can get the girl. <laughs> Over at the courthouse, people are protesting against Freddy, and of course, there are these stupid signs because it's gotta be a gotcha against Trump. Amon gets out of the car and reveals Freddy, who looks like he's one of Mary Shaw's puppets. Freddy talks like a toddler and wins over everyone before a storm hits and his makeup starts running, which dissolves the glue of one of his eyelashes, and it drops right onto his upper lip. 
Yeah, we just can't get away from these Nazi references either, huh? At least these wastes of air acknowledge everything as compared to Hitler today. Back at school, Daphne and Velma bicker about Velma's incompetence at selling drugs, and Daphne admits she does so to build the funds to hire a private detective to find her real parents. This is the moment Velma and Daphne are supposed to reconnect a bit, and I couldn't believe it for a moment. Daphne's moms then appear and give chase, but not before Daphne grabs Velma's hand to bring her with, and they have a moment. Please, just, just stop. This is bad enough. I feel like McDowell in A Clockwork Orange. So the cops give chase as the girls are getting away. They pass a baby carriage, the moms crash into it, and amazingly, they didn't splatter the baby. Kind of figured they would. Back at the motel, Norville is outlining his kidney when the guy on the wanted poster from earlier breaks in and Norville jumps him and is supported by all the stoners in the motel. Yeah, if none of this is forced. Back at the school, Daphne lures her moms away by texting them that she wants to adopt a sick cat. So, of course, the lesbian couple officers give up the chase, run over the jocks, and race home. Daphne then gets out of the dumpster and helps Velma out, and they fall onto each other and have another moment. Again, before Daphne gets a message from a customer. In the park, Daphne makes Velma go out to sell to the customer, who is, in fact, Amon. So we snap back to the Dinkley's house, and the two of them are having a talk about why they were both there. Drugs to make Amon feel better, and money for Dia's case file. The two of them then brush off each other's issues when Amon offers to give Velma the $500 if she helps prove Freddy's innocence. Velma just assumes Freddy is guilty, of course, because he's white, and manages to acknowledge her own possible faults. Which would have worked if you hadn't already shoved my good graces headfirst into a food processor. At the Jones Mansion, Velma Velma looks at the evidence for a second and reaffirms her belief that Freddy is guilty. Of course, Freddy then asks Velma to ask questions because this is a ludicrous assumption and they break for lunch. Freddy, of course, does not cut his own food, and this gives Velma the proof she needs to believe Freddy's innocent. And once again, we waste time with Norville after the guy in the motel has been arrested, and Norville refuses the money because he didn't earn it. Are we kidding? Is this show going to build up Norville as like this pillar of virtue only to bring him down later? At the courthouse, the trial is underway, and Velma is called up to the bench, blasphemes, and is questioned about Freddy. Velma admits she she might have been wrong, saying Freddy can't even feed himself, so a steak is brought out for Freddy to go ahead and cut up. But he can't, because despite being around people who cut his food for him all the time, despite knowing how to use a fork to eat, and being around people who know how to cut food, Freddy can't, because the writers have to play this up like they think it's funny. Do you sniff your own farts? You had Freddy hold a fork wrong when he knows how to use it? What was your payment for writing this episode, Akshara? A bag of Mindy's toenail clippings? Anyway, Freddy proves himself incompetent, but all the laughing in the courtroom sparks his anger, and Freddy snaps, saying he could have removed those girls' brains if he wanted to. The judge then says he's guilty, and Freddy justifiably says, Based on what? Which is one of the only times I will agree with this show. That night, Amon is sulking about blowing this impossible-to-blow case when Daphne shows up and gives Velma her mother's case file. Opening it, Velma reads that the last ping Dia's cell phone gave was at the Jones Mansion, which sparks another hallucination, and in her panic, Daphne stops it by making out with Velma. Yep. It is as forced as it sounds, with as little build-up as I've mentioned, and of course, across the road, Norval stands there sad. All right, as though the problems couldn't end, just like the Rings of Power, Blood Origin, or any other series aimed at destroying that which we love, Velma has even more issues to go over. So let's jump straight into the deep end with how blatantly racist this show is. I get it, being racist is allowed today as long as the narrative fits, but Velma proves the number one thing that was washed during the last few years was brains. It was an eye-rolling moment when the whole, they're coming for our jobs crap happened in Rings of Power, but here, Velma is one galactic empire away from being Frieza. I mean, just listen to this. Didn't do it. Fred's a rich white guy with a tiny dong. He did it. Those are all white people, Daphne. Minorities on TV can only deal drugs to escape poverty. <coughs> white girl with too much money. <coughs> white girl with too much money. This isn't helped by the favoritism the show puts on to everyone that isn't Freddy or the... IHOP waiter. Freddy is guilty because the characters say so. 
Not because of evidence to which there is, you know, none, just because he's white. He always gets the short end of the stick here. Oh, but Norville doesn't end up with Velma, idiot, so it isn't just white people, huh? Sure, but that's also because Velma isn't just racist, she is also a self-insert. Can't have Velma and Shaggy being a thing? No, now we have to swap Shaggy for a significantly less interesting character and point him in the direction of whoever the hell else might pop up. All the while, we let the lead of the show write herself into this shit-tier fanfiction where she gets to hook up with the hot chick. This only compounds my previous paragraph, because Mindy's whole career is built on the self-insert loser who dislikes anyone who isn't white, but also fetishizes white men. Like, we all know the joke is that the Xbox game lobbies have more N-bombs than a Jay-Z album, but I can only imagine what gets thrown around in Mindy's private conversations. And this show is a portal into such. And it is this kind of contradiction that confuses me like someone who thinks a gender studies degree is valuable. Also, I didn't really cover this in the first episode review because I wanted to at least watch another to better compare, and yes, the writing does get worse. It doesn't help that Akshara Sakar, as mentioned before, has been working as Mindy's assistant almost her entire career. So it's not enough these writers are the intellectual equivalent of Curdle's Sour Cream. I can almost guarantee Mindy is ghostwriting entire episodes here. Of course, moments like crashing through walls get a pass, because things like that happen in Scooby-Doo all the time, but when your characters are so retarded, like Norville, willing to give up a kidney for $500 in a motel littered with stoners, that he just said he hates? Man, if I ever even think about getting into 420, 420 culture, or especially 420 related humor, kill me. I get a little twitchy. How about the fact that the trial, as said before, is happening without evidence or cause? And no, an image of Freddy's junk is not evidence. I'm supposed to just believe that Freddy's dad can't hire a real lawyer? Instead of us asking the question of how stupid do you think we are, why don't you just come out and tell us how much you hate us instead, Mindy? Velma straddles this weird line between just about anything Mindy has sunk her claws into and Family Guy. It does not commit to the absurdity, none of the jokes land, and even Family Guy manages to make its goofiness somewhat flow coherently compared to this shit. Velma is everything wrong with modern day storytelling squared, and with Mindy the Baba Yaga at the helm, it was a no-brainer this show was going to fail as hard as the Night King. Anyway, thanks for watching.